Hey everybody, Justin here, and today I want to talk with you about electric vehicles. You'd have to probably be living under a rock to not have heard a little bit about electric vehicles uh, in recent years, and there's certainly a lot of opinions about it and a lot of conversation about what makes sense and when. And so uh, I'm not here to convince you one way or the other, but I would like to talk a little bit about um, ECE's perspective on it, our strategic plan and how it relates to it, and then I'm going to take you out and show you some charging options that are available. Two days ago I was up uh, at an electric vehicle show up in Duluth and it was a beautiful day and a lot of um, folks came out to check out the cars and to hear a little bit about uh, electric vehicles. Now if you own an electric vehicle uh, as an ECE member you have a couple of options that can reduce your charging costs. We have an overnight program that allows people to come home, plug in their car and charge overnight, um, late in the evening until early in the morning and uh, then have a full charge every morning and they get a reduced rate for that. The other option we have is a time of use rate where people can plug in at any time in the day but the cost that they pay is different depending on what time of day that they charge. So for example if they charge at night uh, it's cheap if they charge during the middle of the day, it's a little bit more expensive, and they if they charge during the evening or afternoon, uh, late afternoon, early evening, um, it's quite expensive because that's when we, uh, ECE, pays its peak demand costs. And so those programs are structured to allow members some flexibility, and as behavior use changes and we see more and more adoption, we're gonna continue to evaluate options that would be available to their members. And we're continuing to look into uh, fast charging options, things that might be available for our members to charge while they're traveling from one place to another because charging at home is, is going to constitute a large percentage of your charging. Destination charging or workplace charging are, are another way that we can um, charge vehicles. But when we're traveling long distance, we need to be able to charge fast, similar to how people charge or fill, excuse me, their gas tank. And so we're going to be looking into options to do that. Uh, and I'm going to show you a few of those in just a minute. I was able to stop along the way up to Duluth at a few different stations that show um, how that's done. And I just want to also add that electric vehicles, uh, again, are not for everybody, everybody right now, but there are a lot of practical applications that are coming. And uh, so I just urge people to have an open mind, think about it a little bit, and uh, let's go check out those electric vehicle charging stations. So I made it up to Banning State Park and uh, there's a level two charger here. And um, so I wanna talk a little bit about the different types of chargers. Uh, most folks are gonna charge most of the time at home and those would be uh, level two chargers, usually 240 volts. And they'll give a range of anywhere from 25 to 45 miles per hour of charge. Similarly, this char these chargers here will also give that same amount of range. And so at the state park, People can plug in and charge um, while they're hiking or camping or enjoying a beautiful day like today. Um, I'm driving my Tesla Model Y and that vehicle uh, has a range of about 325 miles. And that allows me to go quite a ways uh, on an average day, but uh, having charging stations available is really important. And so ECE has partnered with multiple um, municipalities and uh, the DNR in this case to establish some destination charging in different locations. Next, we're gonna travel up to Carlton to Black Bear Casino to take a look at the superchargers there. But before we do, I want to show you how the vehicle charging works in this situation. So on the Tesla Model Y, the charging port is located back here. And I have an adapter that I plug in. And then I can take the charging cable, plug that into my adapter, and when the little light here turns green, it means that the vehicle is charging. So I'm gonna hop inside and take a look and see what kind of range uh, I'm getting or what kind of speed of charging I'm able to get. So in this situation, I'm at about 50% charge right now, which is shown right here. And I am getting 4KW, 16 amps at 228 volts, so 240 volts. It would take about seven hours and 50 minutes to get a full charge, but if I was here for two, three hours hiking or doing something like that, you can see 
I would probably gain 25-30% more range. And 25 or 30 percent range equals probably close to 100 miles of driving. One other piece of advice that I'll give folks who are maybe not driving electric vehicles is if you see a charging station um, at a location, uh, please don't park blocking the charging station because folks who have electric vehicles uh, really enjoy the opportunity to use those. And if you're parked in the way, um, they're not going to be able to. So I said we were going to make our way up to Carlton, and we are. Um, but I wanted to stop here in Sturgeon Lake. First of all, to get a great uh, burger at Docks, um, right off of the exit in Sturgeon Lake. And I also wanted to stop in and take a look at this charger. It's a charger that's owned by a company called Zeph, and it's a 50 kW charger. So a 50 kW charger will provide roughly 200 miles per hour of charge. So we're talking about something that's four to five times faster than the charger that we just saw at Banning State Park. And so this is, a, this is what's called a DC fast charger, which gives a much uh, faster level of recovery on your battery. Now it has two, two cords coming out of it, two handles that you can use, um, but there's only one car that can charge at a time. And that can be a bit problematic. Uh, the next chargers you're gonna see are owned by Tesla, and those chargers um, have a lot more uh, capacity to charge more cars. Okay, so now we're here at Carlton, and uh, this is a Tesla supercharger station. And this supercharger station has seven charging stations. There's seven uh, that are facing this direction. So if you have a Tesla, what you do is you back in like I have here, and then the cable reaches over and plugs in. And I'll show you that in just a second. Um, and then they also have a drive-through option. And so if you have a trailer on the back of your vehicle, you can pull right in here and plug in on the left side of your vehicle. Um, if you have a Tesla and you're going to charge on a supercharger, all you have to do is unhook the cord here, come over here, push the button, plug it in, and once the little light turns green, just like that, then we are charging. So right now we're at 195 kW which equates to about 800 miles per hour of charge. Now it's not gonna charge at that pace for the entire time, but it will charge at a much higher rate. So we're talking 20 times as fast as the chargers in at Banning State Park. And so you can charge here for five, 10 minutes um, and be on your way and have gained well over 100 to 150 miles of range. And so you can see there's a lot of options for charging, uh, from charging at home, which is where 90% of your charging is going to be done, to destination chargers like at the state park, or DC fast chargers like the one we saw at Docks in Sturgeon Lake, or kind of the, the really fast charging that's available at locations like superchargers. And uh, these superchargers really give the opportunity for a lot of people to charge and a lot of people to um, kind of quickly get back on the road and get on their way. Well, there you go, folks. You got a chance to see some of the charging stations that are available in the area, things that you can do um, to charge and the places you can go to charge currently. And uh, as I mentioned a couple times now, charging at home really is the large portion of how that occurs and how it happens. And um, we are available as a resource for that. We offer rebates for electric vehicle charging in your home if you go on one of the reduced rate programs that we have available. And uh, I would just like to encourage people and once again just say that we at ECE are looking at finding reasonable and responsible avenues to increase electric vehicle adoption for the folks that it makes sense for. So thanks for sticking around, thanks for watching the video, and I hope you have a great and safe day.